G'day, g'day, I'm Chase of Blinger X, and today we're going to be reacting to What is Intelligence? Where does it begin? By Kurzgesagt in a nutshell. If you have never seen me before, hello, my name is Chase of Blinger X. If you do end up enjoying this video, please consider subscribing because over 80% of the people who watch my videos are not actually subscribed, and you may be in that 80%. So please consider subscribing because it is completely free and it only takes two seconds of your time, and you can always change your mind later. Leave a like if you end up enjoying this video and comment your thoughts on this topic and intelligence and where it does begin because I, again, this is the first time reaction as always. Uh, so I don't know what to expect from this video, but I'm very excited. Uh, and comment your thoughts if you have uh, also a suggestion to another Kurtz Kazakh or any other channel's video that you would like me to react to in the future because I do read every single comment. Let's go. What is intelligence? Where does it begin? By Kurtz Kazakh in a nutshell. Let's go. Humans are proud of a lot of things, from particle accelerators in. to poetry to Pokemon. <laughs> All of them made possible because of something humans value extremely highly, intelligence. We think of intelligence as a trait, like height or strength, but when we try to define it, things get fuzzy. It That's not entirely wrong. Oh, I mean, height is genetic, like 95% of it, maybe like 98. You can't, really can't do much to change your height unless you get like surgery, right? And then strength, obviously you can, you're, you're built with a certain, certain muscle definitions and, you know, most people will have a limit and certain people's limits will be, they will have a higher threshold than others, and but you can, still can increase your strength, so that's probably the most malleable one. But with intelligence, when it comes to IQ, I don't know if you can really increase or decrease that. Some say that certain substances will uh, decrease it, but again, that's probably, you know, up to up to, up to to questioning. Um, but when it comes to increasing your IQ, I don't know if that's possible. Correct me if I'm wrong, but obviously you can educate yourself in like certain fields and stuff, but that's... There's a difference between being intelligent and being knowledgeable, you know, so I don't know I, it's, it's not really wrong in saying that it's like up to ge genetics and just like Almost random <laughs> like I think of two people with an IQ of like 160 had a baby I don't think that baby would easily like boom have an IQ of 160. I don't know how it works But let's get into it like height or strength, but when we try to define it things get fuzzy in a nutshell Intelligence is a mechanism to solve problems Especially the problem of staying alive, which involves finding food and shelter, fighting sexual competitors, or fleeing from predators. Intelligence is not a single thing. It includes the ability to gather knowledge, to learn, be creative, form strategies, or engage in critical thinking. Hmm. It manifests itself in a... Interesting about him including creative there, because, you know, you think, like, <coughs> people who are just intelligent in general are quite... You know, they're into like, I don't know, I'm going off stereotypes here, but like science and Dungeons and Dragons and history and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and maybe not so creative. and Or you think of people who maybe are not as intelligent, but very creative. So it's kind of like interesting that that would fit in there. Because again, intelligence is, and people talk about uh, emotional intelligence as well. So it's like, where, what is intelligence? You know, it's like, it's a very broad term and like really hard to define. Is or engage in critical thinking. It manifests itself in a huge variety of behaviors, hmm. from hardwired or instinct-like reactions to different degrees of learning to some sort of awareness. But not all scientists agree where it begins or what even should count as intelligence. To make this even more complicated, intelligence is also connected to consciousness since awareness is helpful for problem solving. But hmm. we're exploring consciousness in other videos, so today we'll leave it aside. Okay. Intelligence isn't exactly clear-cut, so maybe no. we can think... And we have reacted to a lot of videos on consciousness, like the origin of consciousness. We have reacted to that video, uh, so I'll probably leave a playlist to my Kurtzgesagt reactions in the comments, as always. It is more like a flexible set of skills. A toolbox. Mm. Basic tools. The most ba But not everyone's intelligence toolbox is going to have all the same tools in it, right? So it's... Ah, Basic yeah. tools in the Difficult. intelligence toolbox are the ability to gather information, to save it, and to use it to learn. Information about the world is gathered through senses such as vision, sound, smell... <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong, but I was going to make a blind joke, but yeah, it didn't really work. Never mind. But obviously, I can't take in <laughs> visual information anymore, but I do know about it. And, you know, even with touch, he'll probably... Information it. about the world is gathered through senses such as vision, sound, smell, touch or taste. Okay, good. Yeah. And helps us navigate yeah, and react to the external world appropriately. 
But living things also need to keep track of the state of their own bodies, monitoring things like hunger and fatigue. Information is the basis of action for all living things, and without it, you're at the mercy of your surroundings, unable to react appropriately or flex. But you you can be aware of you know hygiene and fatigue and hunger and all these things, but if you look at I don't know if it's like insensitive, but if you look at Stephen Hawking, right, he he'd be aware of you know him being hungry or fatigued or tired, but he wouldn't be able to you know feed himself. So it's like, is he less intelligent? It's kind of like weird to put boxes and like labels on things a lot of the time, especially with intelligence, because it's, I don't think you can define it. And like, would someone who has a lot of street smarts be smarter than a bookworm? And it's like, everyone's going to have, and social intelligence and emotional intelligence and spiritual intelligence and all these other, you know, where do you draw the line with intelligence and what is it like? People will be good in some regards when it comes to intelligence, like maybe they've got a really high IQ or uh, can speak multiple languages or can process information really quickly, whereas someone else could be incredibly creative uh, and, you know, good on their feet. So, I don't know, it's... If someone's very high in, in one area of intelligence but very low in another area, like, are they considered intelligent or not? I don't know, it's... It's an interesting conversation. Without it, you're at the mercy of your surroundings, unable to react appropriately or flexibly. Information is much more powerful if we can keep and save it. So the second tool True. is memory. Memory Ooh. is the ability... This one's interesting, because if you drink too much, you mem especially on a developing brain, your memory will be a bit, you know, <laughs> so... Um, this one's interesting, because, you know, people have, like, short-term memory loss and struggle to, like remember long term and all these other things so it's interesting how many things go into intelligence save it so the second tool is memory memory is the ability to save and recall information so a living being doesn't have to start from scratch every time it perceives something relevant <laughs> memories can be like about events places and associations but also behaviors like hunting or foraging methods some of these like flying have to be repeated over and over until they're mastered this is what we call learning, the process of putting together a sequence of thoughts or actions. Basically a string of repeatable behaviours that can be varied and adapted. These three tools enable seemingly stupid creatures to act in surprisingly <laughs> intelligent ways. The acellular slime mould, which is basically just a single huge slimy cell, shows behaviour similar to an animal with a simple brain. When put in a maze with food at one end, the slime mold explores its surroundings and marks its path with slime trails, sort of smearing memories on the ground. <laughs> As it That's continues cool. exploring, it avoids the marked pathways and finds its way to the food. Damn. Instead of blindly getting stuck in dead ends, the slime mold adapts its behavior to save time and effort. This behavior is hardwired, and scientists can't agree if that's intelligent, although it does give the slime mold a certain advantage. I mean, he's strategizing, right? And, like, navigating, so that's, you know, that would fall under the un intelligence umbrella. <laughs> bees are an example of more adaptive. I was going to bring up bees, because I, was, uh, I used to, um, I think I watched a few videos or read about some bees versus hornets and these like g giant japanese hornets when that was a thing um well <laughs> you know they probably still are but and the bees would actually obviously the hornets can like bite into their necks and like slice their heads off or whatever right but when there's like 15 bees against one hornet they can actually use their 235 flaps per second <laughs> and positive charge and vibration to actually like kind of burn or like vibrate the hornet to death in a, in a group so, like, that's strategizing, and that's using their strengths and strengths and numbers against, you know, a bigger target. So, just things like that, it's pretty incredible. And dolphins are considered very intelligent as well, and they were, they've been used in, like, um, legitimate, like, navy exercises as well. So Mold a certain advantage. These are an example of more adaptive smart behavior. Scientists mm. trained bumblebees to move a colored ball into a goalpost for a sugar reward. Not only were the bees very skillful at this behavior, which isn't natural to them, they got more efficient over time. Damn. When several balls were available, bees chose the ball that lay closest to the goal, even if it was a different color than the ball they were trained with. 
Wow. And again, beautifully adapted. It's like, that that's a pure example of intelligence and a creature learning to be more productive and more efficient at a task. It's so fascinating. I love stuff like this. For more challenging problems, we need even more flexibility. Fancier tools. Building on the basic tools, more complex animals have a wider range of problems they can solve. They can memorize all kinds of associations, connections, and mechanical tricks. We'll call this tool the Library of Knowledge. Hmm. Take raccoons. Their favorite kind of food is human food. <laughs> I love how the music changed to like scheme, schemey kind of music. Also, we don't have raccoons in this country, only in like Canada and the US, I'm pretty sure. Knowledge. Take raccoons. Their favorite kind of food <laughs> is human food. Their approach to getting hold of such treats depends upon an assortment of theoretical and practical skills that makes them master bugs. See how it's almost like Mission Impossible kind of music? I don't know. I, I, I never shut up about Kurt's Gesagt music. Depends upon an assortment so of theoretical and practical skills that makes them master burglars, able to open windows or pick locks. In a study, what? raccoons were given boxes secured with different kinds of locks, like latches, bolts, plugs, or push bars. They needed less than 10 attempts to figure out how to open each box. <laughs> Even when different locks were put together into increasingly difficult combinations that had to be solved in the right order and with different amounts of strength. Oh my god. A year later, That's the incredible. raccoons still remembered how to open the boxes and were as fast as when they had first solved the puzzle. <laughs> That's incredible, bro. That's so cool. Beyond our library of associations and skills, the most impressive tool in our box is creativity. A sort of really? mental duct tape. Be Most impressive. Damn. Okay. This will be interesting. I mean, you look at all the biggest, like, CEOs and, like, uh, just people who think and can create, like, visionaries, right? Like, Nic the Nikola Teslas, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Elon Musks. Surely they are exponentially creative and that is their biggest because your 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 iq doesn't determine how successful you'll be in life i bet you there are people with iqs of 180 plus that are like pe teachers you know and not to shame any pe teachers but it's not a incredibly you know intellectually straining job you know it's just it's well, well like truck okay maybe i don't know anyway <laughs> i'm getting off track but what i'm saying is your iq doesn't determine how intelligent well <laughs> Your IQ doesn't determine how successful you be in life and like that you're going to become a doctor and a lawyer because there's hard work and there is creativity behind it and some jobs just won't hire you if you're not creative enough and when you are creative it just leads you into all different avenues and you know maybe Kurt Kazak has his point maybe it is the most important form of intelligence that a person can have is creativity a sort of mental duct tape being creative means producing something new and valuable from apparently unrelated things. In the context of intelligence, this means making new and unusual connections, pairing input with memories and skills hmm. to come up with a unique solution to a problem. When you put it like that, like, yeah, <laughs> that is a very handy skill. In another raccoon study, researchers showed the animals that by dropping... Because that would tie into, like, adaptiveness in a new environment or with a new uh, item or something like that. Like, it would tie into adaptiveness and efficiency and just your ability to learn and, and solve, pr like, problem solve would be, you know, a lot easier if you were creative. Dropping pebbles into a water tank, they could raise the water level enough to reach a marshmallow floating at the top. One raccoon came up with a much better solution. It tipped the tub over. Another facet of... <laughs> there was a little raccoon laugh there. Raccoon came up with a much better solution. It tipped the tub over. Another facet of creativity is applying a new resource to a task. They're pests though, aren't they? Aren't they like... Don't, don't Americans like hate raccoons? <laughs> Although maybe they have them as pets, I don't know. Physical tools. But I'm pretty sure they're just like massive rats that have like disease and eat out of your bin. <laughs> Creativity is applying a new resource to a task. Physical tools. Like primates that use sticks to fish for termites in trees. Or some octopuses which assemble collected coconut shells around themselves as a sort of portable armor to hide from enemies. That's so cool. <laughs> Isn't it octopi? Isn't that the plural for octopuses? Ah, anyway, multiple octopus.
That's so cool. Oh, no, octopi. Oh, multiple octopus. No, that's how it would be said in a moment. He's right. Nutshells around themselves. That's so cool. Like, literally, like, forming armor, like, using the little suction cup things and just putting them everywhere on their body. Oh, that's so awesome. Animals are so cool, man. That's just... I don't know. We're not as... Into <laughs> I don't want to, like, shame humans, but because, like, we are the most intelligent creatures, but, man, the animals aren't far behind. In trees, or some octopuses, which assemble collected coconut shells around themselves as a sort of portable armour to hide from enemies. <laughs> Collecting wicked. materials for later use is connected to an even more advanced dimension of problem-solving, planning. Planning means considering mm. the activities required for a desired goal and putting them together in a plan. When unforeseen circumstances... And this would be very important if you are, like, a prey or predator in the wild and you need about, how am I going to eat this gazelle? Or how am I going to get up this tree? Or how am I going to uh, get down to this lake? Or how am I going to scale up this hill? You know, there is always going to be strategizing and planning when you're in that kind of environment. Or, like, how am I going to evade this shark? You know, it's like, there's so many different, like, uh, opportunities for you to use that skill in the wild and new possibilities present themselves, they need to be assessed according to whether they match the plan or not. An example of this intelligent this is really behavior cool <laughs> is hoarding food to eat it later. Mm. This is squirrels an instinctive behavior in squirrels. <laughs> Called it. <laughs> hoarding food to eat it later. Damn. This is an instinctive behavior in squirrels. But even though hiding Again, food... we don't have these in New Zealand. Unlucky. I think... Again, America... I'd love to, like, see American animals. Well, not see them, but you know what I mean. We don't change our, the way we speak. <laughs> like, I'd love to interact with American animals like that. It ...comes instinctively to them, they still need to use advanced thinking skills to make the best decisions. Squirrels examine every nut and weigh the time and effort it would take to hide it against the benefits they would get from each one. Wow. Damaged or low-fat nuts are eaten right away, while nuts that still need to ripen go on the stockpile. That's so cool, bro. Squirrels also That's pretend so awesome. to bury nuts. Also, we've um, reacted to three videos by Kurtzgesagt on ants, and that is they were fascinating as well, so I'd highly recommend um, going into the com pinned comment and checking out the uh, playlist. When they feel watched, these empty caches distract rivals from their real treasure. This is pretty advanced strategizing because to make a plan to distract someone else, you first have to be aware that there are others like you that want the same things. Mm. The more complex the problem, the more tools are needed in combination to solve it. So the more tools there are, the more flexibility a being has to solve the challenges life throws at them. But even for complex problems, each animal's individual situation is what counts. Squirrels are omnivores that defend their territories fiercely. Wait, they are? Huh. For them, it makes sense to remember where there's food in different locations and trick their enemies to improve their chances of survival. <laughs> Sheep don't have any such refined tricks up there. Oh, I'm getting a call. Sorry. Um, God, that's the second time that's done that in these videos. Anyway, uh, it's interesting with squirrels and how they're, like, when they do that, and if the better they learn their environment and then trick more creatures into getting, you know, not getting their food and going somewhere else the more they do that the more like efficient they'll become at it you know and that goes back to the adaptiveness uh and efficiency that will be learned from doing the same strategy and, and learning you know so i don't know that's really awesome <laughs> prove their chances shut up oh. hold on <laughs> turn do not disturb on okay thank you all right no more distractions. Sorry about that. <laughs> ...of survival. Sheep don't have any such refined tricks up their sleeve, ah, but they don't need to. That's pretty they bad. They are grazers and live in flocks. Sorry. The skills relevant to them are social. They recognize uh, and remember many different sheep and even uh, humans for years. A completely different skill. Evolving and retaining a complex set of mental abilities they might never use would be a waste of resources for them. <laughs> Humans went the opposite way and invested in an unusually diverse intelligence toolkit. Language? While this was helpful, by accident, we added another set of tools on top, culture. Ah. No single person could ever build a space rocket or particle accelerator. But thanks <laughs> to our ability to work together and to share knowledge across ah. generations, we can overcome challenges beyond any single individual's ability. This allowed us to shape the planet to our liking. 
We also created new problems in the process, Sudoku, tax forms, string theory, but also <laughs> rapid climate change. <laughs> Those are three really good examples, actually. Sudoku, tax forms, and... Uh, yes, Sudoku, tax forms, string theory, string theory <laughs> but also rapid climate change and... I love the subtle comedy. It's not in your face with the jokes, but they just hi like slide them in there. It's nice. Antibiotic resistance. <coughs> To solve these, we'll need to look past short-term survival and think about the distant future. Mm. We have the toolbox. We just need to use it. Again, there we go. Speaking of tools for learning, we've heard from many teachers that are using our infographic posters in class. So oh, that's we awesome. asked what would help them the most and made an education edition for teachers, students, and everyone else. Wow. They're slightly larger that's posters so cool. about various things that will expand. Do they have these in the, in the States? Or is it like a German or UK thing? Probably Germany, right? I don't know. And over time, from a periodic a table to a world map or the human body. You can get them in our shop and support us if you want. <laughs> and let us know which poster topics you want for your room or classroom. This video was That's part awesome. two of a three-part video series relating to big questions of life and the universe, made possible thanks to a grant from the Templeton World Charity Foundation. Hmm. You'll find our sources and further reading in the video description. Well, I do a really good impression of that. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. That was What is Intelligence? Where Does It Begin? by Kurzgesagt in a Nutshell. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you've made it this far, please consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell so you never miss a video from me. From me. <laughs> also, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at chyznz and join my Discord server. All links to those in the description below. Uh, if there is a Kurzgesagt or any other video uh, on YouTube that you'd like me to react to, please consider dropping it in the comment section below. Usually something similar to this, like education or true crime or comedy, who knows. Uh, drop it in the comment section below if you would like me to react to because I do read every single comment. Make sure you subscribe and leave a like like if you did end up enjoying this reaction video. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Chase of Blangary X. I'll see myself out.